All right, so today, uh, Coach of Spotlight, we have an interview with uh, head coach of uh, the Brighton Girls program, Ashton Peters. Welcome, Ashton, to uh, State Champs. We're excited to have you today. How are you guys doing? Thank you. Um, we are doing very well this season. We're one and, no, two and one, sorry, opposite. We decided to start the season full blast with Forest Hills Northeast, who we beat in states last year. Um, and they did catch us, but I'm okay with them beating us this early in season. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, last year was a unique situation. I, why don't you tell me a little bit about your background at Brighton, how you got, you know, where did you play in high school, college, and then kind of tell you how you got the head coaching job at Brighton, and then kind of go from there all the way up through last year. Okay. So I actually played at Brighton High School from 2008 to 2012. I was on the first state championship team in 2011, which was very, very cool. Um, and then from 2016, I was at Alma College and I was coached under Laurie Marion and Ashley Johnson, both phenomenal coaches in the girls across world. Um, during my time at Alma, I was a multi, like on the MIAA teams multiple times. I was the first, which was very cool, rookie of the year for the MIAA in 2000. 13. I have to remember back. I'm getting older, I've realized, in the lacrosse world. <laughs> and I um, was just like on one of the inaugural teams there, which was very, very cool. And then in 2016, I got hired as a teacher in Brighton. And so naturally, I was like, John, I'm ready to coach. Where do you need me? And I was the freshman coach. And then the following season, John Thompson asked me to move up to be one of the assistant coaches in 2000, it would have been 2018 at that time, one of the assistant coaches for the varsity A team. And my main focus during that time was to just really focus on the draw as well as like the speed of practice since I had just come out of college. So I really focused on making sure we were moving practice at a pace of a college practice. And then midway through that season, it was like three regular season games left over. I was asked to be the interim head coach um, because the other coach stepped down mid season. And I said, absolutely. And was officially hired as the head coach the following fall. And since then we have made it to States every single year, which has been like the goal of my program. My overall goal is for every girl to see a state championship game, whether that is win it or come in second place because either way that is a massive accomplishment and then over the course of the past years we've just really worked on closing that gap between the east side and the west side of the state and i can successfully closed it last year by winning states amazing very very unique time for our program i had my first son in august of last year and was very caught off guard with the miracle boy that I would be provided and given and trusted with who was born with an undiagnosed congenital heart defect um, and that undiagnosed congenital heart defect ended us in a 265 day hospital stay with three open heart surgeries including a heart transplant and that heart transplant actually occurred on April 17th which is in a couple of days and on Easter Sunday last year so this time of the year is very special to our family, but as you can tell, that was in the middle of the cross season. So I was actually not around last season as the head coach. I hand selected an interim coach for our program, who was somebody that I was like trying to get to coach with us every year. So last year I was like, hey, Ryan, I have a different offer for you. And she stepped in exactly what the program needed, exactly what the girls needed, because we knew um, that 2000, 22 would be the year that we could win states. No, so, yeah, that was a, a lot. Huge, <laughs> that's a huge other day. I mean, it just, like I said before, is that it just, it just tells you how great your culture is, about how the girls persevered, got through it. Um, I'm sure they're mm -hmm. glad you're back and ready to, you know, go at it again and hopefully repeat as champions. But that's just phenomenal. Is there, is there any players this year? Cause I know you graduated like five or six really talented girls last year is there any girls that you feel are just going to take that place and step up this year to help you get there again absolutely we um graduated six seniors who i remember looking at them their freshman year and saying if you guys all stick with this you will win states by the time you're a senior and it was cool to say that at their banquet like you did that 
Um, and those girls really were part of setting that culture for our program um, and making sure girls are putting in time in the off season, sure girls are on the wall, in the weight room. All of those things that build a team in the off season. I tell my players, college teams are built in the off season by recruiting, high school teams are built in the off season as well. And so in the off season, we definitely had several freshmen, sophomores, and juniors and seniors all step into that role. Um, currently, we have three captains who are doing phenomenal. Cece Mainhart and Ashley Toth are our main seniors on the field right now. Um, Ashley is an incredible defender who has put in a ton of time this past season in the summer with Larry Marion and MD Lax, and she has stepped up to possibly become a midfielder for us. Um, and then Cece Mainhart is also a midfielder slash midi D for us, and they are absolutely incredible. We've had a sophomore because we had two seniors last year who were like our primary draw girls, and we have had a sophomore, Sophia Hetty, just step in as our draw control, and she is killing it on the draw. Um, and then our girls on the circle, Gigi and Gigi, which it's Georgia Gill, but I never remember to call her Georgia Gill. She's on the circle for us and the amount of time that she put in to get her like off the whistle speed and get all of that ready for season and our ground balls. She knew what she needed to do for the team and knew what we were losing with our girls on the circle last year. And they all came in prepared knowing where they needed to be, which has been amazing. That's awesome. I mean, I mean, I know you had a lot of talent. It's just kind of just you're just kind of like the boy side, like brother. Right? Just let's refill. Let's 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 just fill those gaps yeah. back and forth. Um, here's my here's a question. I know Sean. If you you know he he also would ask, what do you notice in the growth of the girls lacrosse in Michigan that has kind of changed and and how is Brighton like leading that way? So the biggest thing I believe that is changing in girls lacrosse right now is stick skills. Um, when I was in high school, I tell the girls all the time, I didn't have a left hand. I didn't need to have a left hand to be a good player. And so I tell my girls, you need to play wall ball because that was the biggest difference for us. And I have to say, I know that sounds like such a small and minute thing to say that is leading the way for Brighton, but it truly is. We have gone from our varsity program having dropped passes in the past, like previously, to if you come to one of our practices, we have hardly any balls on the ground. Um, the other thing that we require on all levels of our program is 15, not, 15 to 30 minutes of conditioning, which sounds like a lot as well, every single practice because Although a team may be as skilled as all get out, if they can't continue to run for a whole game and they can't run circles around other teams and beat them to those um, junk balls or whatever it is, they are not going to be able to win those games. And once we started doing that, like our first year at States, we lost by a long shot. It was very evident, but our girls came out of it and they were like, coach, we were able to keep up with them because we were so conditioned and because our stick skills were there. And that was something I implemented as soon as I took over the program in 2018. Um, I think the other thing is that a lot of these girls are playing travel across together in the off season with a multitude of different coaches. So although they're seeing me but and the coaching staff that we have at Brighton, they're also getting experience with higher level coaches that are coaching colleges who have um, just an immense amount of training and experience. And these girls are coming in stronger than they left me at the end of season which makes it so when we step up for season, they're learning our plays, they're learning our offensive sets. We're not working on the foundational skills. We're moving into how do we win a state championship? Awesome, no, that's great. Um, well, no, thank you so much for today. I, we really appreciate you coming to visit state champs and uh, we look forward to having you again in the future. And, you know, uh, good luck to you in the rest of the season. Uh, and I hope you guys are, you know, repeat your uh, state championship once again. Thanks a lot for being on. We do as well. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity. And hopefully we'll be back again next year as the 23 state champs.